Hello everyone, and welcome back to Primordial KSP. In this episode, I hope to look at KSP versions 0.13 and 0.13.3, which was the last free version, and attempt to land on the moon for the first time in these early versions. 0.13 doesn't look uh, too much different from 0.12 in terms of how the space center looks, and uh, and once you get into the VAB, you still got the tutorial and uh, command module selection. But uh, there are some significant differences. First of all, I notice fuel lines, very important. And uh, later on, we'll see that the problem I had in point one two, where I couldn't radially attach fuel tanks and rockets, well, that's, that's uh, solved in this version. So now you see me uh, putting the radial decouplers and the fuel tanks like that, which I wanted to do in point one two, but couldn't. And so now it's possible meaning that I can construct a much more elaborate rocket, very different from the one that I used in the previous episodes. In the previous episodes, I've been using basically the same sort of rocket. Once I got to orbit, it was the same sort of thing over and over and over again. But now it can become much more, well, uh, you do onion staging and all of that, right? You uh, have multiple layers and all sorts of fuel lines feeding in all over the place. But it gets very confusing and Frankly, I'm not used to making rockets like this because I'm used to making sort of straight stack rockets without, you know, with maybe one layer of boosters, you know, like a normal rocket would have. Not so much uh, going on in an onion shape like this. Uh, this isn't the most complicated rocket. This is fairly simple, after all. And what I want to do with this is try to get into orbit around the moon. Right? In the previous episode, I had managed to launch to the moon and uh, just uh, fly straight back, but I hadn't made orbit. And so the goal here is to make orbit around the moon. And uh, so far so good on the solid rocket boosters. The question here is how much fuel I'm going to have left once I get to uh, lunar orbit and whether it'll be enough to make a landing on the moon. So that's a trick. A uh, little bit of wobbliness here despite having struts there. But uh, that's all right. It remains stable. And as we run out of fuel in the second stage here, as you can see, but I encountered a problem with the center engine in this stack and uh, here you see it's not going off and uh, that that is a problem. Uh, we are now currently carrying it with us. I try and look for a way to fix this problem. You can't right click on the part to decouple it in this version yet. So you see me uh, going over there, there's no right clicking. And uh, dragging it to another stage, uh, I wouldn't know if uh, hitting spacebar would work. So uh, here we go, we're going to run out of fuel on those outer four engines. And I'm going to stage them. And now what happens? Well now what happens is I lit the next stage, the final stage, and the thrust is actually sort of going through the, the stage that is still attached, but I want to get rid of, and that's blocking the way. And now, in any decent version of KSP, uh, the thrust from the upper stage would just blow up the one in the lower stage, but that doesn't happen here. And so we're not actually gaining any speed, which is why we're not pulling away from the other tanks that I decoupled. And uh, so this is uh, cause for abort. We're not going to make it to orbit like this. Uh, I try my best to sort of knock it off in the hope that it's just sort of... But there's there's no way it's just hanging around. It's, it's firmly attached to the thing. So... Um, Yep, just give up. Actually, uh, the funny thing is we're actually losing ground on the decoupled tanks. If you can see, they're actually drifting forward. That's sort of weird. But anyway, uh, Jeb is loving it, strangely enough. Anyway, here we go. Uh, so I decoupled the capsule. The rocket is still going nowhere. It's actually losing ground on us, which is still very weird. I I'm pretty sure physically it's not supposed to do that, but whatever. Anyway, splash down, abort to ocean. It is a proper splash, and we do have some depth to the ocean, yes. I forget which version that actually got introduced in. But anyway, time for a new attempt. I swear, in this, uh, in this video, you're going to see me having more trouble with rockets than I've ever had before. And uh, I'm not very used to that, because I'm used to my rockets. I, I, 
Uh, granted, I was having a lot more fun here instead of paying as much attention to my staging and all the connections and stuff. Normally when I make a video, I'm very, very careful about these sorts of things. But uh, here I was a little bit uh, lax, if you will, and so uh, never before have I had these kinds of issues with a rocket. Uh, you'll note that the center engine is still an issue here. Uh, the center engine did not fire or uh, ran out first. So I went directly to VAB to figure out what was going on because I didn't want to waste any time. Here we see that the center engine is lit. The question is whether it drains out first or in which case the fuel lines are running the wrong way or whether it's all right. I forget if I fixed it or not in this launch. Eventually I do, of course. But we're gonna find out soon. It looks like the staging is proper. Yeah, I mean, it's draining from the outer four tanks instead of the center one. So it looks okay. This launch looks good so far. And you see, with all the engines lit, it didn't lose any velocity. But now the question is whether we can get uh, to lunar orbit with enough fuel to make a landing and of course this isn't the lander yet uh, I'm just testing out how much fuel I need because it's still not possible to make very accurate calculations in this version we don't have ISP figures yet or anything like that so it's a little bit uh, more complicated to figure out whether you can actually make it to the moon so here's the curious staging uh, the center engine continues on because it had been drawing fuel from the outer engines and only now does it get staged off and that was by that was planned and I'm just trying to uh, get to a decent apoapsis and uh, finish off this stage in order to make an orbit and so those tanks are over with but we still need uh, to continue on to make orbit and that means using some of this fuel in this stage preferable to not use this stage for making orbits so if there's any way to save mass and ensure that this becomes just the lunar transfer and landing stage that would be best oh and just to make clear I'm planning to land on the moon but I'm not really planning on bringing them back just yet uh, that will have to wait for another episode uh, first things first we have to be able to land on the moon first and then we'll make a bigger rocket in order to do the full thing if that's even possible well, I'm sure it's possible in this version it's just going to be very very difficult and involve a lot of struts anyway so uh, we are headed out to the moon having made our transfer still no maneuver node system of course uh, so I'm not entirely sure how we're hitting the moon here what our lunar periapsis will be and as we make the transition I find out that it is in fact a crash course uh, <laughs> Well, what else do you expect, right? So uh, a little bit of a correction there in order to bring our orbit up and actually have a periapsis. Come on there, just a little radial burn. Actually, it's uh, indicating an inclination burn, I think. I'm not too sure it's right, though. A minor periapsis will do. I don't think any of the features on the moon are particularly high in this version. So nothing's going to get in the way. And as we approach the periapsis, of course, uh, time to make orbit, which is something I have not done in these early versions yet. And this is what it looks like. There we go. Still sort of a multicolor gradient on the orbits. I wonder when they end up changing that. But here we go, a fairly tight orbit. And that would be good for landing, but uh, looking at our fuel, uh, we clearly do not have enough. We have plenty of RCS fuel. And we probably don't need that RCS fuel. Maybe, maybe not. Probably not. So that's probably one thing I can get rid of in terms of saving mass. And maybe it's not really necessary to have as much gimbling on the top stage so the advanced SAS can be dropped and we'll just use the, the reaction control power of the pod itself. I scout out the moon and find it to be rather feature poor I guess you could say this is a crater clearly though um, not really the most appetizing place at all 
but we'll aim for that eventually. That's that's the goal. Anyway, time for the transfer back. And uh, thankfully, I already know exactly where I need to burn in order to make transfers. The only question is, and we're going uh, clockwise around the moon right now, retrograde. So you burn uh, at uh, roughly 4 o'clock if uh, Kerbin is at 12 o'clock. And the problem is I don't really know what my Kerbin periapsis will be. So I just burn out and... Uh, at one point lose track of where my orbit is and it's just gonna leave me in suspense I'm going to see the orbit extend out and eventually go hyperbolic which means uh, we're going to be on an escape trajectory away from the moon but I won't know what the curve and periapsis will be because it won't show me that so I'm being very cautious here because I'm not too sure whether I'm going too far or not I'm doing little bursts you can see here's hyperbolic and yep no indication of where I'm gonna end up so very carefully I start time warping out still no change being pretty far out there up ah, there we go periapsis uh, 1283 kilometers and so I have to bring that in I want uh, Kerbin to capture me after all we don't have too much fuel left over so I go directly to uh, capture mode, 32 kilometers. It'll definitely bring me down at that altitude. And we don't have too much fuel remaining. So, uh, successful lunar orbit. And so the next uh, project will be to actually land there. And it looks like that's going to require some mass savings as well as more fuel. And uh, probably uh, adding boosters, right, of some kind. But the question is, solid boosters or liquid boosters? I was about to say boosters, uh, boosters, and uh, and that's something I'm gonna have to think about in the VAB. But uh, here we're gonna make our landing. We think that the mission is all safe and sound. But where are we going to land? Well, I don't have much control over that. And actually, the features on the planet don't make it particularly clear at this point. But as we get closer, it seems like fairly rough terrain. Yep, no way to correct for that now. And we hit there, and explosion, and look, look, Jeb is frightened. Jeb is frightened out of his mind. I have won this game. <laughs> At least uh, I think that was the traditional victory uh, criterion for uh, this version, right? Uh, you uh, get Jeb, get Jeb uh, frightened out of his wits, and he's good. Uh, funny thing, uh, I think, yeah, Bill calms down first, and Jeb is still frightened. So that's that's quite a thing. All right, so uh, yeah, so that achievement is fulfilled, and we go on for um, lunar landing in version point thirteen point three. So here we are, the final free version of the program and uh, not much by way of uh, significant developments between this and point one three so I just proceed making a good lunar lander and that means trying to get the fins we well, don't have any landing struts right so I need to get the fins uh, below the engine I've got a one of the gambling engines the LVT 45 on there and so just trying to extend the fins below it uh, I'll eventually figure out that I shouldn't be staging the fins where they are, but for now it just ends up there. And I decided to go for a liquid fuel booster, not booster, uh, on this base stage. So I add another section of four liquid fuel engines, and you see that here. Another uh, mass savings that I decided to go for is to drop off a lot of the SAS units. So I used to put SAS units on top of the solid boosters and uh, uh, I think the second stage has fewer. Yeah, the second stage doesn't have any SAS units on the top there. So I used to put SAS units practically on everything and I decided to save the mass. They're very heavy in this version. I think they're like 0.7 tons or something like that. So yeah, lots of mass savings, but is it stable? Well, it looks pretty good from here. Looks remarkably good, actually. 
advanced SAS is controlling it. You'll notice that the, on the lander I decided to dump the RCS in advanced SAS so the advanced SAS is lower in the stack now. Okay, boosters up. Oh, aha. Staging error. The liquid fuel boosters, which uh, last longer of course, got staged with one set of the solid fuel boosters, whereas the other set of the solid fuel boosters remain on the stack. So that's a problem. And you can see we have been losing velocity for a bit because uh, we lost the thrust of the continuing liquid fuel boosters. Eventually I decide that this is not a good thing and I go for revert to VAB. Something I very rarely do in the current versions, but uh, with all this uh, curious complexity here, I decide to go ahead. And here we go again. Remember, it is my policy to show all my launches, regardless of whether they end in failure or not. So, yeah, actually this one I have not fixed the staging error. I guess, spoilers! Uh, <laughs> so, uh, you know what's coming up in a sec here as these solid fuel boosters run out. I also noticed that the center engine messed up, but uh, I've got that problem as well. So not only is the staging a problem, but I'll fix that easily enough, except I've somehow failed to. But also the center engine failed to, uh, failed to light there, or was not lit when it was supposed to be. Okay, back to the VAB, make corrections, back on. I'm, I'm wondering whether the center engine is actually hitting the ground and maybe it's getting knocked off. And in fact, you see here, it's still not lit here. It's uh, blackened out. So I assume it's just uh, something has happened to it, clearly. But did we at least get the staging right? Ah, the suspense. Okay, yes, yes, we got the staging right, but still no uh, thrust from the center engine. Still, at least we didn't lose any velocity. But we're carrying uh, some extra mass that we didn't need to, the center engine and its fuel. Or is the center engine actually on there? I'd uh, like myself to turn the camera so I can take a closer look at that. We'll shed that mass pretty soon though, so at this point it's still a uh, go for attempted moon or landing and there you go uh, the center engine actually fell off at some point and it had to be early because we saw early on that it wasn't lit so something happened early on and I'm gonna have to fix that but now I've got a different problem remember how I dropped off all the SAS units well right around here I figure out that maybe I overdid that or at least I have to control this more like I'm controlling it in FAR rather than stock because uh, yeah, things go awry and I have no way of controlling it. So uh, this is abort to ocean time. Actually right now I'm thinking maybe I can land it on the lander because after all the lander has a lot of thrust but the problem is I accidentally staged the fins in the wrong place and so now it's just abort to ocean. So I'll have to fix the fins up. So let's try this again. Now here, something I did to fix it caused the struts to detach themselves. And so now, instead of having the nice stable craft that we had before, the little bits are all flying out all over the place like a skirt. And this is not safe, of course. But did we at least get staging right? Staging is okay so far. Center engine seems to be producing thrust, so no problem there. And we are continuing on. But the instability is getting a little bit worrisome. Very twitchy. And wilder and wilder, and that... That was a staging error, I think. Yep. This time I decide, because I have kept the fins, to try and make a landing, but control is pretty tough, honestly. 
And that's basically because of the my lack of familiarity with this version of SAS. Um, I used to be more familiar with how to do stuff with this version of SAS, but I'm, I'm now not quite as well practiced. Anyway, uh, we still land them safely. Though we didn't uh, get quite as much of the vehicle as I would have liked to retrieve. Alright, fixing things up once again, except for the struts. Uh, I was more concerned about the staging and uh, making sure that everything was uh, proper in that respect. And otherwise, uh, I think I... No, I, I still didn't add extra SAS looking at it. But uh, surprisingly enough, this, this is going to the moon. So uh, we are going to proceed despite the wobbliness. I'll take a look at it, make sure that everything seems to be running properly, and it is. Still accelerating upward. But can I make a gravity turn with this? I mean, not a gravity turn, a pitch program with this. Uh, a little bit light on the acceleration at this point. But a little bit more stable, too. And in fact, the, the pitch program works out. So... Staging that, come on, yes, good. So here I'm exiting the thicker part of the atmosphere and eventually I get all the way up to my apoapsis and manage to get into orbit successfully with this rocket for the first time. Uh, this new design which has caused me so much trouble. That's good enough, actually. Uh, we are transferring to the moon every and everything, so uh, having a low periapsis is to our benefit, especially since the periapsis is on the side we're going to be burning out of. So uh, here we go. Uh, the moon is peering above the horizon. You'll notice that we are on the lander stage now, and so we have to expend all of that other fuel just to get into orbit, and the lander itself had to make the transfer to the moon. So that's that's the balance of things. Fortunately, we did save a lot of the mass off of the lander. We don't have the RCS. We don't have the advanced SAS. I approached the moon. Uh, once again, it was a crash landing, so I decided to lift up my periapsis. We could have done a suicide burn kind of thing, but we were also on the dark side, on the periapsis side, so might as well not do that. Get into orbit first, and then pick a landing spot on the bright side of the moon. And here we go. A nice tight orbit so that we don't have to do too much to get down. And I aim for that one crater. You can see right in front of us there. Seems like the obvious spot to choose. And I more or less start uh, decelerating once I have the edge of the crater close to beneath me. And the question is whether I'm going to have to do this more than once. After all, I haven't uh, landed in the moon in this version with this SAS and everything. I've got a very powerful engine and that could cause problems. And so a little bit worried at this point. Very, very cautious about how I'm going to make this landing because I don't want to have to do everything over again. And probably if I did, I should add some more struts to the rocket, that would be very important. But uh, here we are already at the moon, so I want to try and make it good. A little bit more focused uh, here than I was while building the rocket. Uh, that was sort of a more casual sort of phase. But here, trying to make it all nice and cautious, which means going slow. Tough to go slow with this particular engine because it's it's got so much thrust to it. And you can see the low throttle setting. Okay, now uh, a little over 100 meters above the surface. Trying to keep my velocity within reasonable bounds without starting to go up. SAS is so rigid that I have to turn it off whenever I want to turn the craft in order to kill some of the horizontal components. So you see here the horizontal is getting uh, uh, off to the side there. 
and I had to turn off SAS to tilt the craft a bit to correct for that. And so that's an added complication that, of course, in uh, more recent versions we don't have to deal with. But here we go. Shadow is there. And touchdown. Uh, a bit wobbly, but we are stable. Everybody's happy. Uh, unfortunately, this is all we can do in this version. We can't EVA them. There's no option for that. Uh, I already know that the fuel we have left is not enough to get back into orbit, so that's not an option. And so, yep, just... Uh, Turn off the GUI, sort of go into screenshot mode, and there you have it. First moon landing in uh, version 0.13.3 in Primordial KSP. And with that, uh, thank you for watching. I don't know if I'm going to be doing another Primordial KSP episode. Probably the next thing to do would be to get them there and bring them back, but that's going to be pretty time-consuming. We'll see. Uh, so, But maybe I'll do it for a special occasion of some kind. Alright, so uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed these Primordial KSP episodes. Thank you for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.